Hello and welcome to another video from Oscar Cooper. I hope you're all doing well. It's been ages. I had a weekend off last weekend. I'll tell you why, because all my gear turned up from Dubai. Absolutely awesome. I got the VR out, I got all my back catalog out, I got my starter back. It was amazing to play Wipeout last night. I almost had an out-of-body experience with the VR. I thought I'd fallen out the window. It was, it was totally awesome. So that's where I was. And um, Jesus, we've got a big video. We've got loads to cover. First of all, we're going to cover this racer, Xenon Racer, don't quote me. Uh, there's some stuff going on here, holy hell. Before we get into the video really quickly, I had a really interesting comment about three days ago from a guy on the channel which was like, why doesn't the PlayStation Store have any search terminology for split screen and couch co-op? And he's right, it's a huge problem. It's been a problem for me for years. And the only way I, I, I see around it at the moment is to look at the suggested games and have to go manually into everything. It's a ball egg to say the least. But I've got, I had an idea and it was, you, if you have a Steam account, right, it's a bit weird of an idea, but if you have a Steam account, that has split screen and local co-op as tick on variables and it has an indie tick off. So what I do is I build a list on Steam and then double check it all against the PlayStation Store to see if it's on there. What a fucking nightmare. But that's how I do it, guys. If, if, and if you want to look at fresh stuff or you just, you just have to go to the PC site. You don't have to play the game on the PC, but if you have a Steam account, you can search all these cool titles. Anyway, I say cool titles. That's how I found this, and, and on face value, it looked like a Burnout takedown. That was what it was on the PlayStation 2. Burnout takedown was like the golden years for me for split screen racing. I always want to recreate it. I saw this, and it had what it seemed like really good graphics on the intro. I mean, you saw the intro, and it has got boost button, and it's got some really cool arcade steering mechanics, and I was like, this could be a Burnout clone. We really need a good split screen Burnout clone, right? Welcome to the new XR Championship Trial. We are at three, two, one. Let's go. In short, right, it's absolutely fucking terrible. <coughs> Jesus, I'm dying. Just strike me down. The developers have strike me down. Jesus, I'm, I'm keeping that in. I would genuinely nearly choke myself to death anyway. The, just listen to it. Just, I'm going to stop speaking. Just, just listen to the noise of it. I'm playing Need for Speed Heat at the moment. That game looks so damn good. I mean, I'm not comparing the two. I'm just saying it's difficult for me to jump off Need for Speed Heat and then play this without going through some sort of painful experience. And that's exactly what this game is, both on an audio level and a visual. Check out what's happening in the distance. Now, there's a reason I'm so annoyed about this, and the couch co-op that I had with me also voiced their opinions that it was just so below par and, and they're not even having to play these games all day long. So it's a bit of a disappointment and it's bloody hell is it not cheap either. It's on discount, so, but it's still 35 quid but I, prior to the discount. I think I got it for about 25 quid. It's certainly, it's really expensive and they spent too long designing these damn cars. That intro, which bears no resemblance to this game whatsoever. So I just thought, you know what? I need to just see what a proper, a proper split screen racer looks like and holy shit. And it was free, right? And it retails at less than that game we just saw. So just as a reminder, everybody, that Wipeout, the Amiga collection is out there and it does every single thing. Online, offline, couch co-op, the whole nine yards. Anyway, let's move on. Again, this one found on Steam and a really cool experience, not soured at all by any of this. X-Morph Defense. We have a bit of a tower defense theme going with this video today. This is the first of a few tower defense games. I don't mind tower defense if it's done correctly, if it's got enough layers to it, and if it offers enough RTS elements to keep me engaged, I will like it. And I certainly like this because it's got autonomous split screen and vertical. Love a bit of vertical. The aliens are shooting at us. Interestingly enough, it's the controls that also attract me with this game. It's a full-blown twin stick, really in the vein of something like Rezo Gun, like it's full on. I'm holding it up against a game called Comet Crashers 2 for some weird reason. That's the nearest thing I can get to this, but it is strictly PvE. There is no versus mode on this game, so 
deal with it. <laughs> but it's got a huge campaign. And if you saw at the beginning, it's a co-op targeted campaign. There's two, there's a single player and a co-op, which I like. That's always a good sign. It means that they've laid down, you know, the ground rules with the idea that two people are getting involved. Now you can see that it is some building aspects and it's to do with me putting turrets down and changing the direction that these vehicles are gonna come from. There's a small map in the middle of the center there and you can see they're coming down in columns. It's our job to funnel them all in and hell does ultimately break loose. Your support experiencing heavy losses. Jet fighters in the zone, attacking the aliens. Playing as the aliens has this destroy all humans vibe to it. It's really funny, like the voiceover is really cool when you get to shoot down fighter jets and they send helicopters and tanks and incidentally there's a very deep action role playing element with the upgrades of your ship and what goes on with the buildings and the tree, the research tree is massive. I've not really touched on it enough in this video, but the weapons we're using are one of like 16 unlockables. There's a lot going on here. Jet fighters in the zone, attacking the aliens. The humans start getting really tactical and sending in these big bombing runs on these massive like stealth V-wing bombing ships that take massive punishment and have to, you have to ground to air missile, upgrade stuff, make sure you've taken into account the fact that they fly directly to your base and not round these roads. Not a bad game this at all. I think it's available at about 20 quid around that mark. It's certainly not extortionate and it looks great. So keeping very firmly on the tower defense theme, we've got a game called Arges, Hudges, Jorge Arges Defenders. And uh, found on Steam, quite highly rated, spoken about quite in high regard this game and it just shows it's got very good sound production and the cutscenes are very arty it's not it is not a skimpy job at all the the putting together of this game with imagery blatantly stolen from the studio Ghibli classic uh, Nors Norsica, Norsella, Valley of the Wind, Valley of the B Captain Picard. That he does the voiceover for that guy in that film. Actually, if anyone knows what I'm talking about, please just write in. Hmm. <laughs> so it looks like a QC platformer, right? And and I played this single player and had a bit of an epiphany with it because I was like. It's a side scroller with some range mechanics, obviously, but it looked great. And I was thinking the art style's appealing to me, the platform mechanics are tight, everything's looking really cool. I could have I could just cope with this as a side scroller. And then of course it says no, there's two characters, and when you're playing singly, you swap them out with the hot button. We've had this before, you get it with the Lego games, it's it's cool and whoa, it does something really well in a minute, I'll show you. So also like the Lego games, you're not locked in on a singular screen. It splits when you move away from each other. Man, I love that idea so much. And it also always the angle of the split might be diagonal because you're up in a corner or you need to see a bit. And so it moves it around. And why is this not done all the time? It, it looks so cool as well. It just seems like a no brainer piece of game mechanic and uh, this does it brilliantly. Now you may be noticing that the two characters have different attributes. Yeah, but they are color coded with the enemy. So the blue guy can do damage to the uh, blue stuff and vice versa. And the guy with the hammer also has a turret that he builds. So you will be introduced to these tools gradually and, you're, and then you think at the back of your mind, what uh, what are all these gonna be used for? Well, all is revealed, boy. Yeah, so the end of each stage is the tower defense section. You've got a bit like the first Mario game with the pipes on the side letting in the enemies and it will give you numbers of how many are coming in. There's a lot of depth with it. And there's also a lot of depth with the RPG elements to the game, the non-player characters to the game and the story and the relationship with you and this bloke. There is depth. It's, it's doing loads of stuff right. A massive map with varied environments and each one with that lovely 2D introduction with secrets and stuff and then you get to the big crescendo which is just, it's just really cool preparing, using that turret, you're like a mini Torbjorn and she's got the range and these blue things give her mines, the plants and the gold things give him elements to build the turret so you'll, you'll be ring around trying to get everything ready for the onslaught which cometh. Hmm. 
Without stepping too much into spoiler territory, these aren't the only two playable characters. There is a lot of Children of Mortar stuff going on here with adding to your arsenal with some seriously cool, powered up people and playable characters. So I really like it. I like the blend of gameplay element. The side-scroller 16-bit platformer meets a really cool tower defense boss style stage setup. It's brilliant and very addictive. I want to see more of this game and it will get played a lot and it's just a wicked added bonus that it's got these cool platform levels at the start, full-blown couch co-op, a good single-player campaign and these awesome horde mode boss battles at the end. Attention, this is not a distress signal. I repeat. I completely forgot about that meerkat guy in the TV insurance advert. You've been out, I've been out of the country seven years. Or I thought I'd escaped him. He's still on the TV selling car insurance, a fucking meerkat. Anyway, enough with offensive Eastern European accents. Let's have a look at how to survive too. And as a reminder, it's got a lovely thumbnail in the corner just to show everybody. I don't need to show you the title screen because they refuse to get rid of that, which is covers the health of the player, but it's only on replays. Don't get stressed guys, it's okay. This is bloody as a Helldivers, ooh, Coop. This is a nearly a Helldivers zombie apocalypse game. A, a hell of a lot more strategy in there. Full blown crafting. Full blown, think outward style level of crafting. An annoying infantry screen that interrupts everybody, but four players. So there's a lot going on. This is this has got a lot of moving parts, and a lot of those moving parts were very attractive to me. I need to get out more. It's got all the classic zombies and unapologetic the fucking hell coop. I mean. Speaking stage one of running the YouTube channel, mate, unapologetically steals the colour scheme from Left 4 Dead 2. Really blatant, isn't it? That yellow and that red on the, well, it's still there, isn't it? The watermark, that hasn't left us. So it's a questing game. Now, I tested this on three player, to, uh, on the same occasion, I'll show you footage in a second, and I was really keen to find out if the profile's loaded in. Yes, you can play as a guest, and yes, you can play with your own profile. That keeps up to speed with what you've achieved in your single player game if you're playing on the same machine. That's quite a lot to take on board there. The sea looks bloody terrible and that wasn't even me that pointed that out. But you'll wander into a situation on a mission and it will go full walking dead on you. Helldiver's reference is obviously the control scheme and friendly fire. There's such a coincidence coming up here. Well, I can't fire my bow and arrow because the other player gets in my line of sight and I have to hesitate. There's a zombie chasing her, but I wait that one. I love that. That's so cool. Friendly fire mechanics, especially in a zombie game, can really put out some great situations. Urgency and really cool maiming of your teammate by accident, which is, you know, totally realistic. It does the Divinity Original Sin thing with interiors and stuff. That's also really cool. So you've, you're going in houses and getting all the secret stuff and flushing them out with zombies. You, don't, you just don't know. You can hear them. You open a kitchen door and there's like three of them. This is a really cool game. So as mentioned before, I wanted to try out the three player as I had someone with me and I wanted to load in a previous profile with data on it and have a guest who's brand new with no data on it. And it totally worked. Everything was fine. And this will be going on a four player list at some point. This is a great game. No performance issues. Very well made. I know nothing about the predecessor game as per. It's, it seems to have had a bit of budget thrown at this because that game must have sold quite well then because this is good. It's worth a look. Price-wise, not cheap, 30 quid plus. I'm gonna start writing the price down of things, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Coop, mate, what, what year is it? 20, 2020, what, what year did this come out? Uh, I just Googled it, 2013. How old's the channel? Three and a half, four years? What have you been doing? What's your excuse? Ark? Yeah, I finally caved and, and bought 
Seven Days to Die, and it's a great game. I'll say that off the bat. Great game. You you can you can get if you can get past the the worst textures the human eyeball has ever had to clap upon, then you can deal with it. It's okay. Uh, it, it just comes with the territory because it's they're massive procedurally generated maps. They're completely open world. They're randomly populated. The game has got so much depth with its crafting and with its ideas when it comes to the whole timing event. A bit like Majora's Mask. Don't make comparisons to this. Jesus. But yeah, it, there's a conundrum. There's a conund. There's a conundrum. There's a conum. There's a zombie fucking apocalypse kick. That's what there is. And it's coming on the seventh day. And your job is to prepare for it. But shit just keeps going down. The premise is, as far as I can tell, you're on a procedurally generated map that has buildings on it, that has resources in it, that has secret items, etc. And randomly populated zombie areas, and you exist there and build up your tech, build up everything. I've seen late game footage of generators and machine guns, and we, just, we got to bows and arrows and campfires, but that doesn't mean we didn't enjoy ourselves. And sometimes, check out the right screen, you know, it, it doesn't look too bad. That was one of the things that, that pushed me back was just how shocking it looked every time I Googled footage of it. Its jankiness is world famous and it, because it happens so often, because it looks so daft, you just let it go and enjoy the raw mechanics, the core mechanics of this game, which is surviving and exploring and not being joined at the hip and communicating and there should have been a warning on the box about this. I didn't think games had this in. The idea of the impending doom and the limitless amount of crafting and tech ideas and the large scale landscape and sort of intricate design of it all it's a bit like PUBG or something like that where every building's got something cool inside of it but every building comes with a risk in regards to the amount of zombies that are in there this is a really cool piece of footage where without actively exploring new areas and we're kind of trying to clean them out as you would classic zombie apocalypse style and we notice one around the corner and of course once we start making the noise we don't realize think we get swamped it's great there's panic one of us gets infected it all just goes to shit I love that idea Okay, regulars, first apology, first repeat, really sorry, new people, this game is amazing, I have reviewed it very recently, it's probably the previous video to this, Earth Defense Force, the brand new one, it totally kicks some ass. The series has been around for ages, but Iron Rain really punches through with some beautiful polish on the visuals and the gameplay and the mechanics and everything. This is like a beefed up version of the whole entire franchise. It is amazing. It looks amazing. It's addictive. It's got so many unlocks. I could talk about it all day. I've, the predecessor has been on the channel. I'm a long follower of the EDF series. It's got kind of a cult following, you know, on the alternative gaming crowd, but it's always been split screen. It has always been there for us. It has always had cool guns. It's always had jetpacks. It's just there, a solid, solid game. And this one is totally the best in the series by a very long way. I think it's the B-movie aesthetic and it's beautiful self-awareness and the fact that it doesn't take a breath at all in the campaign. EDF Iron Rain is number two on the list, only one more to come. Um, my number one game on this list is Watam, just 
to confirm and it is a repeat and I'm really sorry regulars but it needs to go on top of something because it's so great. It was interesting because I didn't actually get this footage. This was my team that got this footage. I was in the background doing other things and I had got to listen to it. And one of the things I never spotted was the level of production on the music. Not only the voices, the voices are incredible, right? But the mood the music puts you in. The whole room is uplifted when this game gets switched on. It's also not too shabby on basic game mechanics. There's a lot of fun to be had just with the arcade style running and jumping. There's a lot of layers in there with all of the different unlockable characters. And of course what they do with each other on an interaction level, depending on what object they are or depending on what weird one of these worlds has joined. So playing through it again, I was seeing different outcomes happening because these players had made different decisions. It was incredible. It really quite literally is a sandbox game in its truest sense. You know, it's not <laughs> Assassin's Creed or The Witcher, but it doesn't need to be because it's dealing with far more intelligent subject matter than that. <laughs> it's a bit tongue in cheek because I did have to edit this toilet running around. I watched this about 15 times. I this can't, there's so much amusement in here for me that I need to watch it a number of different times and the noises and stuff, everything comes together. <laughs> It's the winner on the list. I love you all. I'll never have a weekend off again. As per, and we've got a whole bunch more. Michael, Arcade Racers. We ain't gonna put that Xenon one on there, but hell, I've found some buttes. They're all coming together. See you there!